Aaron, welcome to Real Talk. Thank you, thank you. A pleasure to be here. So what is Webstream Studio? What problem does it solve? Yeah, so Webstream Studio is really the user interface part of Webstream. Mm -hmm. So Webstream, in essence, is the uh, middleware that we've introduced in order to connect smart devices to any blockchain or dApp. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we, we really know how to build great infra, right? So we've launched a layer one blockchain that's been super successful with IOTEX. We launched them when Mainnet went live back in 2019. Mm -hmm. We have already 300 million assets on chain, uh, 300,000 users, like 20,000 plus devices is already on chain. But now, you know, we've seen a, a spot in the market where, okay, that's, we don't really have an infra in place right now for this deep end sector. Mm. So that's why we wanted to introduce Webstream. And specifically, me attacking this from a product side, I came to the company one year ago, and this has really been my main focus is Webstream and getting projects to onboard with Webstream. And a key of that is making it really user-friendly. Mm -hmm. That's the key part of product management. And really, so attacking it from that product side, I really wanted to make sure everything is device agnostic, mm -hmm. chain agnostic, and data agnostic, and even language agnostic. So mm -hmm. you can use any type of language to build with. So it really opens it up for even Web2 developers to build with Webstream using Webstream Studio. So this is really blowing the top off the deep end development. So you're opening up for a whole order of magnitude more deep end apps to be developed essentially. So who exactly is Webstream Studio for? So I actually just came from uh, Hong Kong and East Tokyo. Mm. And I was able to speak on a stage in front of a, a whole deep end day that there was held there <laughs> as, as keynote speaker. And just to see the energy around this deep end sector that's kind of formed over the last literally just like three, four months has been incredible. So this, we've already hosted four real world events, just all based around this deep end kind of and real world assets. Hong Kong, the energy was incredible. Tokyo, the energy is incredible. Here in Austin, the energy was incredible. And the amount of projects that we're seeing building right now is it's outstanding. And really that's what our main focus is, is this deep end sector. Um, we started talking about uh, Machine Fi back in 2022, but it's amazing the power that a name, like everyone united behind one name, like deep end has actually had. And it really, that's now we're really starting to see the momentum in the sector. And we, we really want to be at the center of that with our infrastructure and Webstream. So that's who it's for, is for this whole deep end sector. Right. And what features of, of Webstream Studio has garnered the most excitement within the IOTEX ecosystem and the broader deep end community? Yeah. So again, it goes back to just the whole, uh, our ability to really open it up so that anyone can use it. So whether it's, like I said, device agnostic and chain agnostic, like there's a lot of uh, projects that we speak to, they want to stick with their original chain and not necessarily work with IOTEX right. uh, as their layer one, but the, we still, we're still able to work with them in this capacity, which is amazing. So it really opens the door to be able to work with a, a lot of broader range of products or, and projects. So this is interesting because it's more of an L2, really it, it can work with any chain, any project yeah. that don't necessarily use the IOTEX L1. Yeah. So this positions IOTEX really to be at the center of the entire deep end space. Can, can you talk more about that? How will Webstream Studio be positioned within deep end in the next couple of years? Yeah, totally. So that's, we really take it upon ourselves to push the sector forward. And that's why I went to Hong Kong. That's why I went to Tokyo to make sure, okay, we're pushing this deep end sector forward because we're really at the heart of all this. And that's why we're hosting all these events around the world is because we want to be the center of all that because we are the center of all that mm. without the infra. Like, you know, it, it's really tough to go to market. And we foresaw that back in 2022. And we've just been attacking that ever since is just trying to be the center of all this um, infra for these deep end projects. So you're on the technical team. You're the, the product lead at Webstream Studio. Can you talk us, talk us through exactly how it works from the developer side? So say I'm a, a developer, maybe a, I have a small team. How do I use Webstream Studio to launch my deep end app? Yeah. So... What you need to do is uh, co code in any language and then compile that into WebAssembly module applets that you can compile within WebStream. And then you can see the data coming in from those devices. Um, and those devices actually, you're pulling the data directly, which is a unique mm -hmm. thing that um, some of the other competing products don't, aren't, don't have the ability to do right now. So using an embedded SDK, pulling data straight from the device, pulling it into your ecosystem within WebStream. And there you can visualize the data and interact with that data and then generate whatever kind of proof you want to generate. And then using those proofs, um, there's the whole smart contract part of it. And that's where you do the tokenization, whether it's NFT um, or ERC-20, whatever you want to do at that point. 
So which applications within the ecosystem or outside the ecosystem that are considering using WebStream Studio excite you the most? Yeah. So I'm a big car guy. I actually came from the car uh, and automobile industry. Oh. I built a really cool AI product um, that's being used across uh, 150 dealerships across Canada right now. Um, that was before coming to IOTEX. And even before that, I actually worked in fleet management. So I was building hardware and software for transit, law enforcement, hmm. um, the, including the body worn cameras that are used by police officers. Wow. Um, and again, the hardware and software behind all that. So really the hardware and software comes to play there and the automobile industry. Really for me, it's uh, Demo. Hmm. I love what Demo's doing um, and we're seeing their kind of skyrocket in the space. And to be able to work with them is, is, a, is an honor because, um, yeah, coming from where, from where I've come from in, in, in previous jobs, like really... I have a love for autumn for for vehicles and i know they do too they're really big car guys so we get along really well and yeah it's really great to work with them so we've heard demo come up a lot rallon mentioned them giuseppe mentioned them can you describe the nature of that partnership how exactly they're using webstream and devnet yeah so right now what we're doing is um trying to make their their data accessible to developers um using webstream so mm -hmm. taking data from from their uh currently their cloud and bring that onto a chain so that it can be used by de IOTEX developers. Um, we're also talking to them about some different things I probably shouldn't. I <laughs> right. Here, but, Fair enough. Uh, at this point, but there'll be yeah. some partnership announcements, uh, like continued announcements over the next coming little while here. So looking out the next six months to two years, what features are you working on now that you're most excited about? Yeah. The features that I'm really excited about on uh, WebStream right now, um, it would have to be, uh, you know, the abilities to be able to uh, uh, use zero knowledge proofs. Mm. Um, I went to some really interesting speeches uh, in Austin here where really the key to to unlocking things from an enterprise perspective, like we've been talking, people have been talking about like the supply chain for forever and how it can be affected by blockchain. Um, and I think uh, from my understanding, what I'm hearing, what I'm learning from the market now is that a, a stepping stone to be able to really open the door for these enterprise companies to actually step in and start using this on like uh, uh, like a regular basis is like obviously people always talk about scalability um, so but I don't think that's where it ends it's more than that it's the zero knowledge and privacy um, so I think by including privacy in that with zero knowledge proofs you're able to open the door to that whole enterprise market which I, I think that's where everyone wants to take web3 because that will really uh, lead to a lot of mass adoption so that's a fascinating insight. So we have basically two angles that WebStream is upscaling the deep-in development process. The first is it reduces development time for a new deep-in dev, for a new team to launch from years to potentially weeks. But there's also the enterprise component, which as you just said, there needs to be a ZK component in order to get them to be able to use it and be in compliance and to meet kind of their enterprise standards. So can you talk more about maybe which enterprises could be interesting in the near term for using WebStream? Yeah, so um, I can't disclose any names again, but sure. you know, when you look at things like, uh, you look at Walmart, the people that have played in this kind of field for a little while, and um, anytime you get like, yeah, basically any any kind of uh, supplier, you know, like Fred Meyer, whatever, um, these companies, where you're trying to track where uh, your supplies have come and the, th th through the whole supply chain process, um, you know that blockchain, in, if they do in a permission way, uh, you're able to see how fast it goes through that process and make it build like the snap of a finger. Whereas normally to be able to track how long it took for those goods to get where they got to, um, you're looking at like like days to be able to figure that out. Mm -hmm. All these different um, places, like for example, avocados from Mexico, like how, like how do you trace them from the source? It's, there's a lot that goes into it. But again, that's not really like the permission I'm, I'm not a big believer in permission blocking like like that in that way so it to do it in a public way and then introduce zk proofs is where I, i'm hearing from the market is where the potential is um, so that's where i see it going in the future okay and finally are there any calls to action to the community to get involved with webstream studio whether you're a developer or just token holder a regular community member yeah i would say um yeah continue to look at our announcements um we'll be releasing devnet really soon here and you know, learn as much as you can. Um, and if you have any ideas, we'll, like we're, we're always here to listen. And, and if you have any feedback for the product, and that's why we're as a product team to take your feedback and, and try to improve the product. Uh, and yeah, and if you have any ideas, like there, there, we can get you in touch with developers that can help you. 
um, it's all about at this stage, just, just like having a, a box of ideas and, and trying to propel the, the best idea always wins. So, uh, just get those ideas out there and let's build. Awesome. Aaron, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you.